Hey everyone, so I had meant to put uh, at the beginning of assignment 43 um, these problems. Um, no, let's, uh, let's think about that again. Yes. Okay, um, I had meant to put these problems. These are actually in the back of the worksheet. Uh, and they say write the equation for each of these. And I think I'd like to start with us writing these equations. 4, 5 over 6, 6.3, and 7, 5 over 6, 7. So could you please write the equation for this trig function? Come back when you're done. Ah, congratulations. So, um, we know we need to find D as the average of high and low Y values. 6.3 divided by 2. So, 6.3 plus 7 divided by 2 is 6.65. Okay, our A value. Remember, A is... If this is d equals 6.65, a is high y value minus d, or d minus low y value. Uh, and so I see 6.65 minus 6.3 is going to be 0.35 for my a value. Good. My b value, remember, is 2 pi over the period. And period can be lots of different things. It could be from here to here, but I don't know those values. It could be low point to low point, but I don't know another low point. It can be high point to high point. And remember, period is horizontal. So I'm looking at these x values. So I've got 7 pi over 6 minus 1 pi over 6. That's 6 pi over 6, or pi for the period. So 2 pi over pi gives me a b value of 2. And then finally, c. c is the x value where our graph starts, right? So I'm thinking about this as positive cosine, and so this is my c value. If you were thinking about it as negative cosine, this would be your c value. You could use this c value for positive cosine. I can't use sine because I don't know where these points are. Yeah, so uh, my model then, or my equation, would be y equals 0.35 uh, cosine 2x minus pi over 6 plus 6.65. And so that should be that graph. Um, you could... Um, you could put these plot points in your uh, stat, edit, and put them in list one and list two. Uh, you can graph the scatter plot, and you can graph this, and they should sit on top of each other. Uh, would be a way to check that work. Um, but I think this is straightforward. These problems don't require tweaking. They just require us to write the equation. Um, not this one. This is 7, 0.3. This is 3, 0.2. And this is negative 1, 0.3. Okay, please write the equation for that. I'd like to do two more. Methods. How'd it go? Did you say that D was the average of the high and low? Y values, I did. A is um, D minus low Y, or high Y minus D. So high Y minus D, 2.5, 0.25. Uh, so this minus this is going to be 0.5 for an A value. 
Um, next, this distance from this x to this x is going to be my period. Period equals 7 minus minus 1. But remember, b is 2 pi over the period, 2 pi over 8. So I've got a b value of pi over 4. And finally, our c value is where we perceive the graph to be starting. If you thought this was a negative cosine graph, not only would you put a negative in front of the a, but you would use this for your c value. But I think it's a positive cosine, and so my c value is negative there. So my model here, y equals 0.5 cosine um, pi over 4. Don't forget that second parenthesis, x minus and minus 1. Close two parentheses, plus 0.25. And yes, I would tidy that up. You don't have to, but I would. All right. Any questions about that one? Okay. I thought that should be pretty reasonable. And what about this one? What do I do here? I've got this. And I know this point is pi over 2, 13, and pi, 13. And I know this point is 5 pi over 8, negative 5. All right, so... Um, Hmm. Okay, can we do it? Sure. We know that d is the average of the high and low y values. 13 plus negative 5 divided by 2. That's going to be 8 divided by 2 is 4. Our a value is going to be high y minus d. And so that's 9. So there's going to be this midline of y equals 4, and we're going to go up 9, and we're going to go down 9. 4 minus 9, yep, negative 5. Okay, that seems pretty reasonable so far. What about our uh, c value? Well, again, c is where we see our graph starting. If I were doing negative cosine, that would be my c value. But I'm doing positive cosine. I'm starting here. And so this is my c value. c is pi over 2. Well, it looks like all we need now is our b value, and we know that that's 2 pi over the period. And what's the period? Well, this distance is not one period. I mean, I can compute that distance, pi minus pi over 2 is pi over 2, don't get me wrong. But period is from one point on the cycle to the next point just like it on the cycle. This is a period. Ooh, this must be another period. So this distance that we found by doing pi minus pi over 2, that's actually two periods. Two periods equals pi over 2. Well, if I divide both sides by 2, I get that period is pi over 4. Okay. And so if the period is pi over 4, I end up with a b value of 8. Okay? So let's put all this information together. We've got y equals 9 cosine 8, open parentheses, x minus pi over 2, plus our d value of 4. Ta-da! Okay? And the last one of these I'd like to look at is this. This one uh, is number seven on that worksheet. We're given this information. This is 900 comma negative 9.6. And over here at the high point, we have 100 comma 4.8. And that's what we're given. So let's find the stuff we need to find. D equals what? Well, if you're not sure yet, why don't you take a minute to go and see if you can figure out these four constants, A, B, C, and D, and let's see what happens when you come back. Hey, welcome back. 
Um, so uh, D is the average of the high and low Y values. 4.8 plus negative 9.6 divided by 2. That's going to be negative 4.8 divided by 2, or D equals negative 2.4. Now my A value is high Y minus, I'm sorry, high Y, this is the high Y, high Y minus D, so 4.8 minus a negative 2.4 gives me 7.2. 7.2, 7.2, mm -hmm. I go from here up 7.2 to there, I go from here down 7.2 to get to here. Okay, C value, I'm going with 100, the starting X. My graph, positive cosine, starts high, so I'm using that C value. And so all we need to find now is our B value which we know is 2 pi over the period. But I don't have a complete period here, do I? I don't have high point to high point or low point to low point. Hmm. Well, I do have high point to low point. And so the amount of time that needs to pass to go from here to here should be the same as the amount of time needed to go from here to the next high point. So maybe I want to Oh, I can't believe I just did that. D equals positive 4.8, as I recall, and A was, no, that was negative 4.8, and A was 7.2. That plus that to make that, that minus that, now that makes it, ah, I got you, ooh, okay. 4.8 plus negative 9.6. Ah, this is negative 4.8 divided by 2 is negative 2.4. Okay, so there's my D value. And my A value was that minus that, which is 7.2. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, what I, want, what I want to imagine here is that I've only got half a period. Well, if b is 2 pi over 1 period, then couldn't I also say that b is pi over half a period? If I divide both of these by 2, I get 2 pi, I'm sorry, I get pi on top and half of a period on the bottom. Well, half of a period is what I'm presented with here. The distance from a high point to a low point is half a period, 900 minus 100 is 800. So either I can say pi over 100 is my b value, or I could say, well, look, from here to here is 800, which means from here to the next high point will be another 800. So I could do 2 pi over 800 plus 800, 1600. I have that pi over 800. Pi over 800. What did I miss? Oh, I missed this. Oh, yeah. um, and so I get the same B value either way. So our equation then, Y equals 7.2 cosine, uh, B value of pi over 800, X minus 100 is 2 plus negative 2.4. And you could just do minus 2.4. Alrighty, so yeah, and why is it that I wanted to look at that with you? Well, because when we look at these problems, one of the things we have to do is build that model. Now, the model that we build, and it was you know perfect for these, may not be perfect for these, and so that's why we're going to need to do some tweaking here. Okay, so let's take a look at some tweaking here. Um, I haven't talked to Mr. Pause about this, and so I don't know. So maybe what I'll do is I'll do one of them, and then you can discuss the other one of them. Um, maybe we'll do that. Um, okay, so we're looking at what's my function. I'm going to do the first one, Fairbanks, Alaska. 
um, where t equals zero is January, and t equals two, uh, t equals one is February. Okay. Yeah, some students try and make the uh, this be you know there's 31 days in January, so they're going to actually make a function of time that time is in days. And here I'm saying make a function where time is in months. Um, I think I'd be much happier with that. Okay, does the data appear to you on a, a graph of sine or cosine? Well, I guess that means I have to get the data into my calculator. So let's, um, let's take a look here at our data. Uh, remember, we go to stat after we turn the calculator on. Stat, edit. Um, and I've got clear, hit enter, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Um, and I think uh, you should ask Mr. Pause to edit this to put January to January because your brains will be much happier with that. Um, good, and now what about our temperatures? We've got negative 11, negative 1.5, 0.5, 18, 36.9, 53.1, 61.3, 59.9, 48.8, 38.8, 31.7, Well, that seems very interesting. Why am I going so much further in one minute? Well, it's because I still have the old data here from the last problem. So let's get rid of the old data. Seem to have gotten rid of too much data. Yes, I did. So I can insert negative 11. Um, so I insert uh, negative 9.5. Uh, 7 insert 0.5. Okay, I think they're all there now. Yep, same number in each column. Okay, so y equals, I can get rid of these because they don't pertain to our model. Scatter plot is turned on. I'm going to go over to zoom. I'm going to choose zoom stat. Okay, there's my model. So, which trig function do you want to use? Sine or cosine? Uh, positive sine, negative sine, positive cosine, negative cosine. Some people like to go with uh, negative cosine and start here. Um, I think positive cosine would start there. Uh, maybe we should consider both of those. Um, I'm going to start with this one, positive cosine, and we'll also check this one. Okay, so my data appears to be cosine. I'm going to go with positive leading coefficient. Based on this data, find a period uh, and D. Okay, so I'm going with D equals 61.3 plus negative 11 divided by 2. Um, that's 61.3 plus negative 11 divided by 2. And then I get 25.15. Okay, my A value then, I, Y minus D. 61.3 minus 25.15, and that gives me 36.15. Um, you know, just a, a cautionary word of advice. This is the high temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. This is the low temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. This is the average temperature in Alaska. That's below freezing. The average of all the temperature in Alaska is below freezing. Just think about that for a second. Okay, and then on amplitude, 
Good. And we were asked here for period. Now, so I want to say something about this. Period, when you're talking about something that is uh, cyclical over the course of a year, the period is going to be 12 months. Um, so P equals 12 months. And therefore, our B value is going to be 2 pi over 12 or pi over 6. Now, that doesn't mean we might not tweak this a little bit. But in general, yeah, I can't even have a, like a pi over. Like, if you thought the period here was 11 months, what happens is then that, like, because, you know, there are 12 months, but you're saying there are only 11, which means after five years, we've shifted Christmas to take place in June. Yeah, Christmas doesn't happen in June in our hemisphere. So, yeah, 12. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, that was part B. Part C, build a model. Okay, well, I've got A, I've got a B, I've got a D, and my C. Well, my C is starting place. And I saw this starting at the high point, and so 6 is my C value. C equals 6. So let's try this out. Y equals 36.15 cosine pi over 6. X minus 6. Close two parentheses. Plus uh, 25.15. Okay, so y equals 36.15 cosine pi divided by 6, x minus 6, close to parentheses, plus 25.15, and graph. Well, that looks pretty good, except not really. So then here it says that we should uh, tweak the function uh, if we're not quite happy with that. Well, and look here. Like, I'm going through that point just fine and that point just fine. So I don't think I have to deal with any of my y transformations. But I notice horizontally. The graph is to the left of these points. And on this side, the graph is to the left of the points. And you know what that tells me? That I need to change my C value. I need to push the whole graph over to the right a little bit. Now, if I was on the left side of the points here and on the right side of the points here, then I would say my period was off and I needed to, you know, horizontally stretch this picture. So, but since, you know, the graph is to the left on both sides, uh, that tells me choose a C value. Um, now, the horizontal distance from here to here is 1. And the horizontal distance from here to here is 1. And so how far do you think I need to move it over? Well, it looks like less than 1. It looks like less than a half to me. Um, so second insert... Um, Oops, second, insert 5.5. Let's try that. Graph. Well, I went the wrong way. Uh, clearly, things have gotten worse, and so what I really meant to do was say 6.5. Oh, that looks good. That looks quite good. But maybe it's too much, like I'm too far away from these and these. What if we do 6.4? Gosh, that looks good. And sometimes it's really useful to have 36.15 cosine pi divided by 6 x minus 6. Point five plus 25. Um, 
so that you could grab both of them and see which one you like better. Yeah, I definitely like that one better than 6.5. What do you think would be, well, what if we made it instead of 6.5, if we made it 6.3, even less than that, 6.4. So the first one is 6.4 for a C value. Mm -hmm. and the next one is, gosh, that's hard to tell. I guess I'm going to graph that second one by itself. This is the one where C is uh, 6.3 instead of 6.4. I really like that. Could the other one have been that good? Now I'm going to look at 6.4. And those of you with color screens, this is much easier. You just graph them at the same time. You'll see which one you like better. This is the 6.4. <coughs> mm -hmm. I really do think I like the 6.3 better. Um, so I'm going to use the 6.3. In fact, uh, I'm going to, for the purposes of our you know, using the model, we'll compare the answers. Okay, uh, use your model to predict two times when the temperature will be 10 degrees. So is 10 degrees an input for this function or an output? Well, when I look over here, input was months and output was temperature. So this is a Y value. They're giving me the output, which means I want to come over here to my Y equals and type in 10. Okay, so here, um, zoom stat. Did I already graph it? Did I already look? Yes, I did. So I just have to graph that. So here's our tweaked model. It's those points very nicely. Huh? And I'm finding two times when the temperature will be 10 degrees. So one time when the temperature will be 10, another time when the temperature will be 10. So I can calculate, intersect. I'm going to bring my calculator close to one of the points of intersection. Then hit enter. Okay, I get 2.47, is that a 4 or a 9? 2.47. All right, now when is that? Well, 0 was January, 1 was February, 2 was March. 30 days has September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31. So I know that March has 31 days. So 0.474 times 31 days in March. So 31 times 0.474, and I end up with March 14th, 694. So, you know, March 14th, um, you could maybe go and say, well, it's going to be 14th and a bunch of hours, and it's more than half of the day, so maybe March 15th. And, you know, so uh, let's see, though, what happens when we plug this value in uh, for our other function. Right? And let's see what we get in this situation. And I can graph and I'm graphing. Okay. This is the 6.4 model. I'm going to see what it comes up with. Second, calculate, intersect. And I get 2.574. Well, that is different. Um, and so point, oops, 0.574 times 31 days in March. Oh, March 17.794. And this was 469.5694. Um, yeah, that's different. That's like three days different. Um, so you've got some variation, uh, but do push yourself hard to tweak and to not settle. Because look, even the difference between C equals 6.3 versus C equals 6.4 made a three day difference. Um, yeah, that's something to think about. Now, I don't know 
how Mr. Paws is going to assess you on this. I will tell you that when we did our word problems and scatter plots quiz in the classroom, maybe you'll actually be in the classroom for this. Wouldn't that be great? What I would have my students do is when they thought they had a good model, like they had tweaked it and then said, this is the one I'm going with, I would make them show me, like it says on the quiz, bring your calculator to Kukla and show him. And so I would tell the students whether it was good enough or not. Okay, and, and that's what I did. And I will encourage him to do the same thing to allow for variation. Uh, but yeah, push yourself to think about these tweaks. Okay, um, now remember, these. this was one time when the temperature was 10 degrees. And so I see we're asked for two times. So please, you know, find that second time. So let's take a look over here. We've got our graph, uh, second calculate intersect. And I'm bringing it over until I get to, until I get to, oh, I'm still up there. Am I still up there? So. Oh, yeah, there it is. Enter, enter, enter. And I get. 10.225 with one model. Um, and that was our 6.4 model. Let's try our 6.3 model. That seemed to be a better fit. Graph. Okay. Second. Ten point one two no one two five one two six. Okay, yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. Um so that's um that's how we do these problems. Um oh wait, now predict what the temperature will be on June fifteenth. June fifteenth. Well that's a time. And a time is the input. So I'm going to go over to my table. And I'm going to have to plug something in here for time. Now it says June 15th. 30 days have September, April, June. June has 30. 15 over 30. Well, 15 out of 30 is 1 half or 0.5. And according to our little table, June is 5. So June 15th is going to be 5.5. Right? The 15 out of 30 days plus the number for the month. So if I plug a 5.5 in, I can see what the different models give me. So I'm getting... 57.36 and I'm getting 58.175 and you know we're within um, uh, plus or minus two degrees of each other so I feel confident with either one of these answers. Remember if you're given an input like June 15th you want to come over to the table and put in the value for June 15th. If you're given an output like when is the next time we get 10 degrees then I want to graph and do second calculate intersect. Okay, so I think we can talk about a number of dis uh, specific discrete steps, and you should let uh, Mr. Paws or I know if you're having difficulty with any of the steps in particular. The first one being can I get the data into my calculator and see the scatter plot? Second, I need to be able to find A, B, C, and D. Um, Third, I need to talk about tweaking. Fourth, I need to be able to use my model to predict if I'm given an output, so I graph them and 
two second calculate intersect or if I'm given an input I go over to my table and I put in the specific input. Well look what happened when I did this last year 56.475 within two degrees we're all good. Um, all right any questions about this one? Okay well I look forward to um, doing more of these problems with you. I don't know how many you're going to do, whether it's just this two days or if he's going to use that extra optional day. Um, I'm going to make, I think, a video for it just to be sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, helping out in any way I can. Have a fabulous day, everyone.